Meiosis I is about the separation of homologous chromosomes within an animal cell. In an unreplicated animal cell, the process of meiotic division begins with the formation of homologs or similar chromosomes at prophase one. Prophase one continues as the homologous chromosomes pair up with each other and complete synapses or protein adherences. This cohesion helps them to remain as newly paired homologs while a change of genetic material occurs at each chiasmata or crossover junction. Metaphase one occurs when pairs of chromosomes congregate on the metaphyseal plate. Both chromatids in each homologous pair are attached to kinetochore microtubules, proceeding from the centrosomes at the sides of the cell. Anaphase I begins as the breakdown of protein cohesion factor between the pairs of homologous chromosomes allows these homologs to separate. These distinct genetically mixed chromosomes are guided by the spindle apparatus to polar opposite positions of the cell for the beginning of telophase. Telophase one, at the beginning of tel telophase one, each half of the cell has a complete haploid set of replicated chromosomes. Each chromosome is composed of sister chromatids. One or both chromatids include regions of non-sister chromatid DNA. Meiosis II begins with the separation of sister chromatids within a cell that has just finished meiosis I. Prophase I begins when the separation of sister chromatids is accomplished by a spindle apparatus that forms for the second time. In late prophase II, chromosomes, each composed of two chromatids associated at the centromere, move toward the metaphyseal plate. Metaphase II begins as the chromosomes are positioned on the metaphyseal plate as in mitosis. The two sister chromatids of each chromosome are not genetically identical because of meiosis I. Again, the kinetochores of sister chromatids are attached to microtubules extending from opposite poles. Anaphase II begins with a breakdown of proteins holding sister chromatids together at the centromere. This allows the sister chromatids to separate. Chromosomes move toward opposite poles at the end of anaphase II. Telophase II and cytokinesis occur at the end of anaphase II as the nucleus reforms. The chromosomes begin condensing and cytokinesis occurs. Meiotic division of one parent cell produces four daughter cells or haploid cells, each with a haploid set of unreplicated chromosomes. Each is genetically distinct from the parent. Now that we looked at the division of a gamete, we're going to look at the division of a normal animal cell, mitosis. Um, moving from G2 of interphase into prophase, the chromatin, which was already duplicated during the S phase, condenses into distinct chromosomes. They appear as identical sister chromatids joined by a centromere. The centrosome containing a centriole pair has also duplicated itself, and they begin to move away from each other, forming the mitotic as we move into metaphase, notice that the nucleolus and nuclear envelope have dissolved. The spindle fibers attach to the kinetochores, which are specialized proteins located at the centromeres. Metaphase is the longest lasting phase of mitosis. It occurs when the centrosomes are at opposite poles and the chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate, attached to the spindle fibers by their kinetochores. In anaphase, the cohesive bonds between sister chromatids fall away, and each becomes a true chromosome. The spindle fibers attached to the kinetochores pull the chromosomes toward each pole while those that are unattached lengthen, elongating the cell. As the cell moves into telophase, two daughter nuclei form. Nuclear envelopes form from the fragments of the parent cell's nuclear envelope, and the nucleoli reappear. By the end of te telophase, cytokinesis is already underway. Cytokinesis is the formation of a cleavage furrow, which pinches the cell in two. We now have two identical cells, each with its own nucleus and its own set of identical genetic information.